Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of Coroner. A great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I do love that this episode kind of has this parallel between Jenny kind of in the aftermath of everything last season. Everything she's kind of still going through specifically in after the events of the season finale but the same thing for donovan all like the hole in his spine the cancer like all of that and how both of them are kind of responding and obviously this episode is just the first step of many in this long journey uh down this path that they're both going to go down uh and i think that's such an interesting thing because they're separated this episode and going forward they will be reunited but it's going to be so interesting because they have this they have a bond and it is this thing of they do talk about stuff but they do also because donovan's spent most of last season not telling Jenny about his circumstances. So, and Jenny doesn't always end up confiding in Donovan. So it's like both of them kind of struggle a little bit on their own rather than kind of being there for each other. But they, they kind of were there for each other near the end of last season, or am I thinking of season two? I might be thinking of season two. Either way, it's just, it's one of those interesting things that I'm, I'm curious to see how that plays out for them going forward. But l let's start off with Jenny's circumstances. I have not seen, I have not seen Coroner since obviously season three's finale. So I'd actually completely forgotten about it. Like the moment they're bringing up the Liam stuff, I was like, right. I was like, they left that super open ended. It seemed like he was super dead, but I wasn't sure. Turns out, oh, Liam's super dead. I'm curious, did they leave it open-ended because the creators, I mean, the, sh the the show didn't know if they wanted to kill Liam? Because I think I even looked it up to ask it, like, oh, it's Liam dead? I don't think it was, it was, it was left super ambiguous. And the fact is that they lean into, like, a, oh, he definitely is dead, showing you scenes of him kind of on the slab. Or I don't know if that was him in the hospital, but most likely, like, him, like, at a morgue or something, you know, um, dead, that... I, that's why I'm wondering, like, had they not made that decision yet, that even for them, they weren't 100% sure whether they were going to kill Liam or not. Obviously, for storytelling why purposes, it's a gut punch to Jenny because, you know, she she's, you know, on this plot of land that she's kind of living on. Uh, very free spirited kind of like, um, growing vegetation, uh, just because she wanted to get away from everything she needed to. She was trying to get away from death. And that's the sad thing is like, no matter how far you run, just, I mean, it's just the nature of life, you know, when there's life, there's death. And there's, it's always, even as far as she's gotten away from her job as a coroner and everything, it still found its way to her. She still found herself kind of wrapped up in the mystery, no matter what. Cause she also can't turn that side of her brain off anymore because it's there. Because, you know, it's, also solving these deaths for people giving making maybe uh the victims feel seen that's become a part of her now that it's ingrained in her it's not all there is to her but now it has become a part of her that i think by solving these mysteries like death itself she she talked about that and you know that death has become a part of herself because she has kind of surrounded herself with it and other people have kind of talked about that too i want to say ross specifically talked about that like the fact is maybe even their therapist about how she surrounds herself with death but it is a thing of like solving and kind of helping someone else with like the death situation i think it alleviates some of her pain, but also allows her to focus on something else other than her own pain, you know? So, I just thought that was just kind of interesting. And, and, and it's typically how Jenny kind of has reacted over the course of the series. She has a tendency to kind of retreat in many different facets when it comes to death. Especially when that death Kit so close to home. I mean, to be fair, this is the third time this has happened. Obviously, her sister was one thing, and obviously, it left such a scar on her that she literally, that trauma was buried so deep that it didn't resurface until her husband died. And then, obviously, having to deal with that, because it was an aneurysm, if I remember correctly. Then there's the whole Liam situation now. It's like, and also, your personal death in your personal circle, you've hit the trifecta. Your sister was an accident. Your husband, an aneurysm, I don't put that under natural cause. It's, it's just kind of like the effed up randomness of the world. And then Liam was essentially murdered. So I'm like, man, you hit the trifecta. And it's just, that's enough, that's enough death, you know, just on top of your job, but plus just in your personal life. That's enough trauma to make anyone go like, I need a break from all this. Once again, 
she felt happy. She felt good. She was able to kind of get away. Still, thoughts of Liam and everything still creeped in. And even later on, she's like, I don't know whether it's like, she's like, I just kept driving until I hit a spot place and I just stopped. She's like, I don't know whether it's because this is some place that you and me drove by before or we drove through this area before or maybe it just reminded me of you. And she tried to like, she tried to pick this spot. And once again, she found herself in the middle of an investigation where a guy named George ended up dying. Uh, well, he's kind of a kid. I think he's like a high schooler or whatever. Well, he ended up being on the property of the, the land that she's staying on, which is by this guy, uh, uh, Tyler and his uh, significant other, Haley. And the cops immediately go like, okay, you are, you're obviously the one that did this. And the problem is because he used to be an MMA fighter uh, and he ended up getting like a brain injury. He even has like a scar, I think, from like the surgery that he had when when he gets really stressed out he kind of goes into like manic episodes and he gets like he starts hallucinating and he's seeing stuff so he's like oh i needed to protect george from the wrestling team and then like uh george's parents are blaming him it's like oh you're supposed to teach him how to fight but that's not what tyler wanted to do anymore he wanted to be as far away from the fighting that's why like they moved out here away from the city and now it's like the cops are treating Tyler like he's the one who did it. It's like, okay. And Jenny has to step in as coroner. So they're examining the body. And I love, what was that? Um, Jenny was saying something and the detective was like, oh, don't give me that uh, liberal something out. We don't do that here or something, doctor. And he like the fact is he made that whole remark and it was almost like, a, okay, I, I, I see what kind of time it is. Because obviously Haley was like, yes, my husband's in Christ. Like I said, I think they're married, but it might just be her boyfriend. I think it might be her husband, but it's like, right, he's in crisis right now. He's a black man in crisis. Do you know what that means, Jenny? And she's like, I understand what that means. So she tried to be the one to talk Tyler down. She tried to like mediate the whole situation, but it got worse. Worse and worse, but upon, because obviously Jenny's like, the fact is she talked to Tyler earlier when he was looking for George and he seemed calm. He wasn't in like a manic state. Like if he had killed George and he would be in a very similar state to what he's in now, but it's like he was calm. So it's not him. They like say that the body could have easily been moved and put on his property because at the end of the day, like that's the only thing that, um, it's the only thing that a uh, like pointed towards George was uh, pointed uh, to Tyler to being like George's murderer. That was the only thing that was on his property. There was no evidence otherwise because considering he was near the water, it was like washed away. But Jenny found like they checked his nose and they found pollen there. And eventually, after doing like kind of an examination and stuff, they ended up finding out all these different like plants and stuff that were in his system. And then, especially when you talk to, like, when Jenny talked to his dad, his dad's all about, yeah, my son, he got so obsessed with those video games, started talking about a weird video game. I sent him there to get stronger, and that, like, the wording of, that way he gets tougher, that way he could fit in more. It's like, the fact is, he, he must have already felt like, oh, my son was weak, or he needed to be, like... He needed to fit in. It's like, if those people are treating him like shit, he shouldn't have to fit in with them. Like, the fact is, he found commonality with with Tyler, you know, but that wasn't enough for his dad. His dad was like, no, like, you're going to, you're already, you already stand out. I need you to be, like, he wanted his son to conform more and not just be an oddball, not be a weirdo. And he wanted his son to be strong and sort of weak, like, because in his mind, that was like his way of being like, oh, that's, that's how you... That's how you face your problems. You're, you have to be strong. You have to fight back. You have to be a man. That was kind of his dad's perspective on things. And the moment Jenny was like, oh, like these flowers, and recognizes that the flowers that Mary had brought out, uh, uh, George's mom, had brought out were very similar to the ones that were on George's body or just kind of like uh, on him uh, when they examined his body. And say, like, oh, he died here. And at first I was like, wait, did the mom kill him? And then I was like, what? then the way the dad was acting and the mom was like, don't touch me. I was like, what's going on here? Turns out George killed himself. Basically, he already had an L in his leg because L for loser because they cut that into him. And it was, and even the detective was like, oh, boys will be boys. But for Jenny, it's like, oh, like assaulting someone that's really like, yeah, like boys will be boys. Is that really okay? He carved the rest of the word evolve into into his leg uh, and even left a suicide note. And basically he ended up, when he cut that into his leg, he basically ended up cutting something and ended up cutting so deep he ended up bleeding out. 
and his dad in particular put the body on Tyler's land so that Tyler would be at fault because he's like, it is your fault. He's like, all this game talk, you know, the suicide note saying, like, I'll see you in the next level or whatever. It's like, yeah, he's the reason why. Like, I wanted Tyler to take responsibility. I want people to know, just like we knew, that he was responsible for what happened to our son, you know? But that was also the thing from, like, George's mom. Of, like, he didn't want to be a fighter. He didn't want to fight. For her, it's just like, you couldn't leave him enough alone. Like, Rather, like, being home wasn't even a safe space because for him, it's like, his dad couldn't understand him and it's like, probably looked down on everything that you were doing. It's like, no, you're not a real man until you learn how to fight and fend for yourself. Fit in. Don't be weird. Don't be an oddball. So that just probably made George feel even that much more alone, you know? And he's trying to put this all on Tyler, but he didn't help the situation either. No one did. I mean, once again, it didn't seem like it was ever, like, really, like, you know... It's not until at the end where the detective was like, yeah, we arrested the kids and charging them with assault, but they're minors, so those charges won't really stick. You know, it's kind of a moot point at this point. But it's like, like him kind of making it seem like, oh, kind of really doesn't matter. And even telling Tyler, like, oh, keep your nose clean. And Haley's like, he's always kept his nose clean. And he's like, right. I'm like, you're kind of a dick. I don't know if that right at the end was him being like, right, sorry. Like, I don't apologize. Like, I shouldn't be talking to him. Like, I'm the one that jumped the gun on this. I don't know if that's what that was or whether that's just him being like okay sure whatever like it didn't seem like he grew from this situation it seemed like he pretty much stayed the same but maybe that's me reading too much into it but staying on everything with jenny the uh her calling liam at the end you know and wanting to talk to him and hell even when she was like gonna do like a, a, a um you know a pic drawing like uh you know um to get, get a better understanding of what happened to george she drew like a body uh, but then she erased the evolve off his leg and just put the w stab wound that Liam had. And, you know, still kind of reeling from it all and talking to him on the phone. It was, she's like, because for her, the most heartbreaking thing is I can't hear your voice in my head anymore. So she calls his vo his phone just to hear his voicemail because it's like, right, what if I end up forgetting you? Because if I, if I can't remember your voice in my head, that means I'm losing you and I don't want to lose you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I love you. You know, and just like obviously snapping back to reality when the voicemail is like, oh, this is the message you want to keep. Press one. And it's just like, it's not going to be an easy road. Those That pain, that tragedy, um, getting away wasn't enough. So she ultimately does go back home in the end. And granted, was waiting for it. It's like obviously Ross. I don't know if she's properly dealt with the whole mom situation fully. So now she's got to deal with that on top of the whole Liam thing, especially because, like, her mom and dad are kind of rekindling things on that front. So that's a whole thing. And the fact that she came in, part of the plant dropped, and she's like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. And she's kind of breathing in, just kind of like, okay, I'm trying to, you know, trying to take it in stride. But it's like, yeah. And especially when she goes back to work, it's going to become a little too much. Which, speaking of work, kind of ties into the Donovan stuff, because this is also Donovan's uh, uh, first day back at the job, and uh, uh, Malik is happy about it, but uh, mostly uh, the victims, there was a Colleen, um, that poor lady who found her body is just like, right, kind of the worst time to be walking with like your heels in hand, walking barefoot, stepping right into the blood, it's like, ooh, all that squishiness beneath your feet, your bare feet, um, but uh, this is about the new coroner, Eli, which I love the whole uh, uh, River and uh, Dennis situation where she's like, oh, what'd you put there? It's like, we can't cheat. She's like, I've never cheated in my life. But he's like, the fact, it's like, you know, she's like, what are you going to do? Tell him? She's like, you told him. It's like, no, he guessed. It's like, we had the exact same answers. And the moment Dennis was like, hey, here's, a, he's like, oh, let me see them forms. And he's like, oh, congrats. Gr great work, Dennis. River? I'm not angry. I was like, please don't say what you're going to say. He's like, but I'm just disappointed. I was like, oh, you're such a dick, Eli. I'm like, yeah. The sassiness with it, too. I was like, oh, I love that actor. Uh, I, I, I talked about this when I saw the uh, trailer initially. I was so excited. But that's the actor who plays Pre on um, on uh, on the show Killjoy. If you've never seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, but I was like, ah, Pre's in this season. I love it. And he's, I, I just love it, like, him and River super aren't getting along, and obviously him and Donovan aren't getting along, because Donovan always showed up at the, 
you know, uh, coroner's office to get info from Jenny. And she was always so accommodating. Eli's not that. He's just like, no, 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 this is my space. Like, you need to uh, bounce, leave before you disturb things. And it's just like, man, I cannot wait for Jenny to get back. I even love at the end, uh, Eli brought donuts. And then Rivers it sn slaps it out of Dennis's hand. Like, what are you doing? He's like, what are you doing? It's like, She's like, Dr. Thomas bought those. He's like, yes, yeah, so? And she's like, we're Team Ginny. We're, we're Team Dr. Cooper. He was like, well, can we at least like split half the box? And she's like, all right, I mean, they, these do look good. So I was like, do you want to eat the rest of these at my house or your house? And he's like, wherever you want to move in together? And she's looking at him, and he looks at her, and like, the casualness in which he said, like, oh, let's move in together. It's like, Okay, I mean, because that could be a make it or break it conversation because it's like, right, it's like kind of that awkward. I mean, hey, you could still keep going even after she says no, but it's like kind of getting turned down from a proposal. It's not the same, but it could be. And even if they do move in together, I mean, will it work out? You hope it will and you hope it does, but it's still just kind of like, okay, let's see where things kind of go on that front. Um, Side note, I didn't realize this at that time, but maybe I didn't really real because I know it's the actress who plays uh McAvoy's um Donovan's uh girlfriend is that the actress who plays Kayla in Resident Alien is that the same actress it feels like it might be but may maybe I'm mistaken because she was in season one of the show and by the time like I would have seen because she was introduced last season of Coroner and I definitely remember she was in season one of Resident Alien. Maybe she didn't have the nearly as many pop-ins in season one as she did season two, but I, I don't know. Either way, she doesn't want Donovan pushing himself, but he's trying to like, no, he's trying to get back to normalcy and, and it, she's not helping it in, from his perspective because she's like, okay, here's your inflammatory medicine. I I don't want you to basically treat this as like a you take like take it slow. Don't like kind of rush into it. it this isn't like a painting where like hey, you could just start on a brand new blank canvas. You're still working with the same canvas. Don't treat it like it's a new canvas, you know. But Donovan did get some good news when it turns out. Hey, like not only is he. His cancer's in remission. The hole in his uh, spine is healed. Like, even the doctor's like, I have not seen anything like this before. He's like, oh, so you're giving me a clean bill of health. It's like, well, we don't really do that. He's like, yeah, but you're saying I'm okay. It's like, yeah, put your clothes and get out of here, Donovan. Like, other than some checkups, you're great. So, he's filling himself. And, you know, upon investigating this further, they yeah, and especially uh, when they end up uh, examining the body more, it turns out that... Colleen has, like, they could never find, like, okay, so she's got all these bruising, so it's, like, at first it's, like, okay, was she in an abusive relationship, and it turns out her and her husband had a fight, her and her husband Marcus had a fight, but it wasn't anything like that, um, uh, he's, like, I might have grabbed her wrist, that was about it, like, during the fight, but I've never, like, because they were, like, oh, some of these wounds might be older, it turns out that, she was kind of like her, she was taking medication that made her blood thinner and that basically um, the netting from when she fell, like the netting she fell on, like it poked small holes in her. One ended up hitting her vein and because her blood was so thin, she ended up bleeding out from it. So it was just like, just everything in conjunction went wrong in this particular case and it led to that. It is kind of sadly an accident. It wasn't a, a very much like, well, neither this or the George case ended up being what they seemed like they were. The George thing it was, that was suicide. This situation with, um, I want to say once again, her name is Colleen, was a, you know, an accident. Because it turns out that the person in charge of the pharmacy that she was getting her medication from, because she's an artist and she kept drawing this person stalking her, turns out it was her pharmacist because he messed up on the dosage on her um, medicine. He gave her way more than what she was supposed to, but he's already screwed up before. And this would have been, um, this would have ended his career. Like he would have gotten sued to high heaven because of it. So he confronted her. She freaked out, especially because she thought she was being stalked. And now it's like, right. She was freaked out. She fell over. And, you know, and once again, the a spike from the net or whatever, like ended up poking her in the very wrong spot especially under the circumstances of how much her blood had been thinned out and now she ended up dying because of it. So it is sad how this all played out because of the accident. Uh, Marcus came in wanting to get revenge for his wife. It's like, 
you have to die. And Donovan's trying to talk him down. In fact, Donovan doesn't just talk him down. Donovan goes a little crazy. He pulls a full-blown uh, Riggs, lethal weapon uh, Riggs, by being like, oh, guy, you can pull the trigger. You think you're going to? He's like, the fact is, I survived... Um, a uh, hole in a back, cancer, and someone, a murderer attacking me, and you th getting the best of me, and you think you can take me down? I'm a superhero. So it's like him overcompensating, because it's like, hey, got a clean bell of health, I'm not going to, like, I've already been put to the ringer, I felt like my death, which is like, he kind of, on some small level, just kind of accepted, like, oh, things were going to be bad, and nothing was going to get better to some extent. Even if it got better, he was still going to have to deal with the cancer, never would have thought the hole in his back would have healed, like, so he had this very perce this perception in his head, and he also made it clear he was never going to get caught off guard again. To the point he grabbed Malik, and even Malik was like, "Oh, I kind of has all my a life flash before my eyes in that moment." But like he steps to Marcus, like, "Go ahead, and pull the trigger." Do you think like I'm I'm the superhero in this case? And he's telling Malik later on, like, "Oh, I was just speaking his language." He's like, "I'm good. You look good." And he's like, "Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Can't you tell I'm good?" And Malik's just laughing, ha ha ha. And then he stops laughing and smiling because it's like, "Yo." That was some wild shit. It's like, yeah, Donovan's not in the best place right now. Yeah, he got that good build. And basically, he ended up... I think he's just overcompensating. Like I said, I just think everything just is hitting him all at once. And it's just making him act wild as hell. And I think that's going to be a very heartbreaking and very dangerous thing. As Donovan probably gets a little more brazen. And I could definitely see this affecting so many aspects of his life. Especially how he goes about investigations going forward. It's definitely going to be interesting to see what Donovan's story looks like um, as this season progresses. Uh, I'm also curious because... Uh, just kind of like a extra side note thing. I do know. I don't know if the show is ever really like officially renewed for a fifth season, technically speaking, on on CBC, the Canadian channel it airs. Uh, but I know that Sarinda Swan, who plays Jenny, wanted to walk away just so she could do other stuff. So I remember they were like CBC is trying to figure out like so what are they going to do with the show because like obviously the show is based on books that circle around Jenny's character so how they adjust and pivot the show would they change it going forward would they stop it with just season four I, like I said this was something I read a couple months ago I think I I don't know if anything's changed subsequently since but that's the last thing I heard about it but either way so I'm, that's why I'm almost like. Is this going to be the final season? The seasons typically end off, not always, but typically end off enough where everything's kind of resolved. There's still enough threads to kind of continue over to the next season, obviously. So I guess it depends on how this season plays out, especially because, once again, Jenny's going to come back to work and what that means in conjunction with Eli and everything Donovan's going through right now. We'll ultimately have to wait and see. Um, and also uh, stuff on the more family front. So. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.